All right, so when we last gathered, the party left the village. They made their way along their journey towards Starla City. They traveled through a portal that was their X on the map destination. And when they went through this portal, they traveled for about to them, what felt like five minutes, but in real war time, it was about two whole days. When they exited, they were outside of some look, some old-looking ruins of sort, and you can tell that some things had gone down here. And as they were slowly going through that, they met up with their uh, contact. Uh, Henry and Henry and Yashua they go way back they used to work together and uh, Henry's method of getting here is that he was working on some things and then suddenly there was a big ass dragon in the sky and he found himself in Palamecia after meeting up again and Drava Introducing himself to Henry. They had a, a small, small battle with a few unsavory creatures. And the further they traveled, the closer they got to their destination. As it was beginning to get late in the day. And it was getting dark outside. And they find themselves in an alleyway entrance to the city. And they were... Stopped by a robot asking for a form of identification. With that being said, we will now begin. Did this thing just ask us for ID? Please present a tangible form of identi identification. Otherwise, entry will be forbidden. Uh. What, do you want an introduction? I don't have an ID. Wait, hold on. Riku, what happens if I show it the medallion? You got like four of them. Four of them? No, 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 like I'm talking about the one we, uh, we found at the campsite. You're talking about the, the three colored coins, or the, or the seal that Angela gave you. Or, uh, not seal, the metal looking thing. Wait. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Uh, do it and find out. Like this thing's gonna go into attack mode if I show it that. Uh, whatever. So what, what? I hold, I hold this metal thing. I forget what it was. What was it? A medallion too? Yes. Uh, you show the robot the medallion, and it scans. It scans it. And then its eyes light up and it scans you. And it states Bioauthenticity authenticity invalid. You are not the record owner of this medallion. How did you come into contact with this? Ah, uh, I found it at the campsite. I just figured it could be a ticket in. Just figured it could be a ticket in. Or, if I was lucky enough, I could return it to the owner. Upon inspection of our records, the owner of this medallion is considered deceased. What? There is no possible way to return it to the owner. <laughs> the hell? That is what our records say. Please present a form of identification. Uh, right. 
pulls out the other medallion that Angela gave us. It's scanning the medallion. It scans you. It scans Henry. It scans Drava. Authenticity confirmed. You are now permitted entry into the city. Please do be careful. There are some not kind individuals that reside here. We are not held liable for anything you lose, any loss of life, any loss of money, any loss of items. Also, Operator Henry, it is good to see you again. I do believe Master Francesca is waiting for you. You may enter. Oh, oh. Operator Henry? And, and Draper, she calls an operator. What's, what's that mean? Is that like a form of command here or something? Joshua is just like rubbing his hands. I wonder. Ah, uh, well. I'm sure we'll find out. Um, excuse me, Mr. Uh, actually, I don't know if machines have genders. Uh, excuse me, the ID machine. Uh, which way should we be going? If you proceed directly along this path, you will find a gate. There is a red button you need to press to open said gate. Once you walk through the gate, you will be in the alleyways of the city. After that, it is up to you to determine what route you need to take. Oh, well, uh, thanks, I guess. Uh, come on, guys. And as she starts walking, she sounds aloud. Are all machines that are made like that act like that? Not the ones where I'm from. The machines I'm from, you can't tell the difference between if they're human or not. Until they tell you. That's... really interesting. Yeah, it's, uh... It's their way of, uh... What's the word? Well, from, from what I remember, if you have a... A close relationship with a machine over there they will tell you that they're a machine or some sort of uh, synthetic huh interesting oh let's see where's that where's that but is this it she will walk over to the button well it seems like a button she presses it and the gates open up now let me move you all to the Mappity map. Dude, it'll be awesome if you put cyberpunk music in this. I was looking for some, but a lot of it uh, was not copyright free. Uh, also, I also don't know the Cyberpunk 2077 uh, soundtrack like that. Mm. We're coming from here or from on, the, on top? Over here. Okay. Yes. Columbus, you alive? Oh, did his Discord glitch out again? I hope not. It happens, since he uses phone Discord. No, that is unfortunate. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, there you go. No, I'm using a uh, computer right now. Oh, you, you mute yourself? Yeah, because the fire alarm was beeping every two seconds. Oh. So how do I pull the little token guy out? <laughs> you drag it from your... Uh, character page? From your character page, yeah. You see where you click on the little list of... Uh, you see Drava, your character. You just drag it. There you go. Yep. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Alright. So, you all are walking through an alleyway... You can 
see a lot of papers and boxes and disheveled concrete all over the place. Uh, you can see a, a wood pallet. And looking up, you can see some buildings that don't appear to be very high. Uh, they almost look... They look short enough, but not too short to where, if you so desired, you could probably jump up to them or attempted to perform parkour to climb atop these roofs. And upon further inspection of area, you see a lot of monitors with different programs and such on them. Uh, you can see advertisements, you can see music videos, you can see what appears to be news stations. And all of them are speaking in terms that Dreva and Yashua don't really understand as they haven't been to the city before. Damn, look at all this tech. So primitive. Can I roll for intelligence on to explain what's going on in the news for you guys? Well, you are an insider. You know what? Go for it. It makes sense that you did. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Um, the better role would be to do uh, history. History. There's a role for history. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A history. So roll. Ooh, nice. Oh, well, that's a good roll. Alright, class is in session. Alright. So, what are you telling them? Wait the fuck up, Samurai. We got a city to burn. <laughs> On the news, they've said there's a lot of crime and a bunch of violence going on to be careful and in the back streets. We just happen to be in the back streets, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, we just happen to be in the back streets. <laughs> Yasha just glances at Henry when he says that. Uh... <laughs> okay. Okay. So... Uh, turf Wars, I assume? Let's make this a little interesting. At the mention of you saying turf wars, one of the news reporters says to be wary of a gang called Mentos as they are in the process of trying to claim territory that does not belong to them as their own and there have been reports of other rival gangs trying to initiate turf wars. So, do be very careful when traveling between the hours of 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. We just happen to be in between that time zone. <laughs> it is currently uh, 10.30 p.m. Ah, uh, yeah, lovely. <laughs> and at the mention of hearing that, Drava, she looks to the both of you for an explanation of a turf war, because the way she explains it, it's a matter of her understanding of a turf war is trying to claim land and monetize it. She also doesn't understand what you meant by 
uh, how primitive this to the technology was as this is all she's known for a large majority of her time here in Palamecia. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to explain the technological differences between here and where we come from. Right, right. I could do that later, or I could do that now. Don't we just do a simplistic uh, wisdom roll to try to simplify this? Um. In hmm. terms that she would understand. Hmm. I could just give her the holographic phone and just see, see. So I big see difference. Fail a wisdom. <laughs> You can do. Let's see if you're trying to simplify something. Okay. Please roll the both the both of you. Please roll um, intelligence and insight. Okay. And when I will roll intimidation. I will, I will roll her <laughs> understanding of what the two of you say. Oh, for, we have to roll insight? Yes, please roll intelligence and insight. Okay. So intelligence. Insight. I'm not surprised that Henry got a higher roll when it comes to intelligence since you're an engineer. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, before you explain it verbally, uh, with the rolls that you two got, you explain it. You explain it in a watered down version that she comes to understand very quickly. And now, if you want to verbally give an explanation, you can. But keep in mind um, the watered down, quick version of it. And al also, you all are um, walking and talking at the same time. Okay. Can I also check up over here since you said it's very easy to parkour up to? I check where the where? boxes are, where the boxes and barrels are, and computer parts. It looks like right here. Uh, yeah. What do you? Are you checking over there for? For anything valuable, to us. Uh. Yeah, sure. Once you get over there, though, um, mm, roll, roll perception. Perception. Okay. Yeah. Perception. Perception. Roll. Okay, that plus your passive perception. Okay. So you are examining these boxes and crates, yes? Up here, yeah. Alright. So, in the boxes, you don't find very many things of use. However, you do find a, a few unopened Mega Ethers. And for that few, I will roll a 1d5 to see how many you get. All right, you he got five, five mega ethers. <laughs> and it was useful. Five. And in the Back. containers, you you lift them up and they appear to contain some kind of liquid. And you open up about three of them, and due to how dark it is, they appear to what you no, know, they appear to look like what uh, might be oil. And as for the junk on the ground, you find a couple of not so damaged looking computer parts, but if put in the right hands, they could be used as upgrade materials for a piece of technology that you may or may not have now or that you might come to contact with later. Oh, computer parts, just general? Yeah, and I'm going to... Again, roll a 1d5, see how many you get. 
Mm. Alright. So you have one set of computer parts. You just found one transistor. One is better than none. True. He finds a RTX on the floor. <gasps> God. That would be that would be jacked. Oh, also, Chris, um, I don't know if Rick told you, but anytime anyone finds something, opens a chest, uh, everybody gets those things. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. I told you that. You did? Yeah. I don't remember. My bad. So all right. Ages okay. ago. It's just like the monster parts that yeah. we all share together. That of. I was hoping for better stuff, like a spell, but... <laughs> oh, that's right, you're a mage. Yeah. Hopefully a piece of paper with a spell on it. A piece of paper, well, a, a <laughs> list of ingredients, how to make a fireball. We are in a dirty alley full of paper. <laughs> there, there, there are a bunch of random papers on the ground. Up ahead, over there. Mm -hmm. Those yellow pieces. And even where I was just at, I might check. I go back down. We gotta give Ricky his turn, Andrea. <laughs> nah, go go ahead and search. I'm over here expecting okay. the technology. Like, to me, it looks all primitive, but at the same time, it could still be useful. Do I have to roll something to jump down and not hurt myself? <laughs> uh... Give me an acrobatics roll, please. Sure. Dude, if you slip and fall <laughs> on your ass. <laughs> acrobatics. Oh, joy. He's... <laughs> Six. Okay. So, mm. what's that, Riku? Uh... Hmm. He... Henry jumps down... But he messes up the landing a little bit and doesn't land on his feet the way he wanted to, and thus he would take 10 HP of damage. Ah, uh, he sprained uh, his ankle. Uh... <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say he sprained his ankle, but you know how, like, when you were a kid, you, like, jump down and you don't land right and your feet just really hurt for a second? I've had where I landed not the way I wanted and my legs didn't absorb the impact the way I wanted and like you feel like a little bit of a shock. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was. That's what I had in my head. It didn't come out right. Okay, I get you. Yeah. Okay, can I search the papers that I landed my big ass feet on? <laughs> hmm. Um. Yeah, but this time... Since you are looking for a very specific type of paper, I need... I need... One perception roll, one insight, and one sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. We'll do perception first. Insight. Holy ahead. crap! Henry doing work. Gotta do. Okay. <laughs> so, your perception roll allowed you to sort through the papers in such a way where anything that looked that looked like crap to you you tossed this up anything that looked valuable you kept mm -hmm. the insight role was for inspecting those pieces of papers you decided to keep which you wrote a, a critical success <laughs> and the sleight of hand was for tossing those pieces of paper back down in the exact same spot you picked them up from that way they looked undisturbed and thus okay. With that insight roll you got, you... Give me the fire four. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no way. That's not happening. <laughs> it's a joke. Oh, yeah. It's a joke. What, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. What you <laughs> did find, though, is that you found a piece of paper containing the gravity spell and the slow uh, spell. Nice. Nice. And I was those... honestly hoping for him to find a recipe of the bomb crab rangu. So, gravity, is it just a scroll of it? Can I learn it? Yes, and then this is the method for learning things. So, okay. when you find when you find an item that contains something that, that you can read to mm -hmm. learn something, uh, I need you, you have to roll to, to spend act <clears throat> Roll to spend active time reading it, and therefore learning the spell. And <clears throat> I learned base. So those two scrolls are for basic slow and basic gravity. Yeah. So here's how this is gonna work. Mm -hmm. For gravity, because it is a dark type percentage based spell. I'm going to have you... The, the base roll for that is a 1d10 minutes. However, the higher your intelligence and your wisdom stat is per 10 points, it goes down by a minute. So, because of your intelligence being 22, meaning you have 12 extra points in intelligence, your roll for... Reading the gravity spell will instead be 1d9 minutes. 1d9 minutes? Yeah, so just type r uh, slash r1d9. Char. Nine. Rick, did you give him some of your luck? No. Remember, he's from the same world as I am. Yeah, but like, I mean, two crit successes right off the bat at the beginning of. All right. Anyway, me and my bewilderment aside. So, because you got the highest possible roll for learning a spell, you now have a boosted mm -hmm. version of this spell. So, gravity normally deals 10% of the enemy's max HP as damage to them and it costs 10% of your MP your boosted version of it will instead deal 15% of enemy max HP as damage though it will cost 15% of your MP and thus you learn the spell immediately so so for for uh, a description say yeah, so for description's sake, uh, you took one look at it and immediately learned it. And that was just gravity. Yeah. Okay. Now for 15. slow, uh, I need you to roll a 2d8. 2d8. Okay. R slash 2d8. Flash R, my bad. Yep. Forgot to edit this yesterday when our last session when we leveled eight. up. Four. Okay. Four. So it is going to take you eight in game minutes to read that spell from start to finish. Okay, but once once that's those fine. eight minutes go by, you will have learned the spell. Let me put a timer on. All right, so, uh, are you good with, with that? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm happy about that. So, moving on. I'll you pulled off the same the nonsense group. I did. I'll run to the group. 
All right, so continuing on with the scene, Drayvon and Yashua are walking and talking as Yashua explained to Drayvon the differences in technology as compared in in Lufenia as compared to Palamecia, and she is she's slowly but surely understanding what's going on and whatnot, and. She, is, she was never really one for the whole tech scene, but the more she listens to Yashua explain things, the more into it she gets. And as she walks by this set of papers, uh, she notices a flyer of sorts on the ground, and she picks it up, and it reads something about... Uh, electing the next political figure, and on the back of it, it reads uh, something about a nightclub, and the owner, their their name is just F. And she she looks and says, "What is what is this? Even what kind of flyer is this?" And it gives barely any description about electing whatever political figure is going to be next and just a picture of some kind of establishment with the letter F next to it. What is that supposed to mean? How is this an advertisement? Whoever made this should be fired if you ask me. Should have got an F. Yashua laughs. <laughs> well, from the looks of it, that's that's our clue where to go next. Nightclub F. That's that's gotta be where Francisco's at. Probably, but mm. as for the political figure, takes a look at it, thinks, Ugh, politics. I never pay. I never pay much attention to that stuff, anyways. I don't this blame why you. Why stick to religion? <laughs> Yashua just. Raises an eyebrow. Religion. You forget where we come from, right? There's no religion where we're at. Wait, that's the joke of it. <laughs> Alright, well... I guess if this is supposed to mean anything... Uh... I guess I'll remember the address. Me. Actually, I'll just... Stuff it in my pocket and... Check... Check it later. As all of you acquire this poster, with the address being what I'm about to type up. A lot of garbage on the ground. Was that the only important thing in the pile of flyers? Or do I have to do another check through? <laughs> um. Yashua is just kicking some of the flyers out of the way. Okay, I, I better check it before he ruins anything. In this. All, all you see, for the most part, are just different colored flyers. But, if you really want to inspect the pile, I am going to need a... I'm going to need an investigation roll. Investigation. Okay. Okay, so... Yashua just sees a... Oh, well, the both of you just see a bunch of useless papers on the ground. <laughs> anyway. You know, they could have just recycled all this and saved some resources. And after hearing recycle, dripping. Wait, do they recycle in your world too? Of course. <laughs> of course. The streets are a lot cleaner than this. You wow. won't find you won't find a speck of garbage on the streets. Really? Yep. Well that's good to hear. They have a robot called a Roomba. <laughs> that sounds really cute actually. Huh. It, it sounds it's like a uh, pet. Yeah, there are multiple versions of them. 
If I recall, there was one that was really popular with females. It's like a big puck looking thing with googly eyes. You could customize it too. Hmm. Well, before I became aware of the, you know, existence of other dimensions, I, I didn't think very many people recycled where I came from. Granted, there were quite a few people who did, but there weren't enough. And when I became aware of other dimensions, I didn't even stop to ponder if people in other dimensions were cycled. Um, Dravo starts checking the area. Oh, this, this over here looks like it could be a recycle bin. You want to uh, grab all these flyers and throw them in there? Yeah, I'll do it. Mm, might as well. Cool. Can I take a look inside the garbage bin that I'm tossing this stuff in? Oh, you're dumpster diving now? <laughs> I, I need computer parts! Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, give me a, um... No, oh, that one wouldn't really make sense. Uh, just do another investigation roll. Okay. Remember, I'm the the guy who likes building things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Twenty-five. That's insight. I said investigation. Oh, insight. It's clicked. Investigation. Okay. Well, you find a microchip, but nice. upon just looking at it, you don't really know what it's for, but you decide to pocket it anyway. Very important. Hmm. I'm curious about that satellite dish. Would you like to inspect said satellite dish? Well, yeah, since. This is the kind of world where you don't think there are such thing as satellites. Okay. Uh, it is on a roof, so how are you going to go about getting up there? Uh, I could just falcon armor it. Okay. Can I use gravity on him so he doesn't hurt himself? <laughs> to lift uh, him? uh, you forget I was a pilot. I'm not going to yes. hurt myself. But And I, I have a gravity I... ring, I'll be fine. <laughs> Double safety, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, as you all were throwing those papers into a recycle bin, uh, eight minutes of time has gone by, and you have now successfully learned the slow spell. Yeah. Well, I had 12 seconds on my timer, but yeah, it's fine. Excuse me. Uh, so upon making it to the roof, uh, you attempt to... Investigate satellite dish and nothing out of the ordinary really sticks out to you. As far as you can tell, it's just a regular old satellite dish that you hadn't seen in quite some time. This thing is so retro, I'm surprised to actually see it. I think I was just like freaking six years old the last time I seen a satellite dish like this. Draymond walks to the bottom of the roof that you were just on. And he, uh, how old are you actually? I don't think I asked you that. Yashua smiles at her. How old do you think I am? Or how old do you think I look? Uh, well, when we stopped at that tavern along the way, the, uh,. The bar lady said you look no older than 17, but I would mark you down for like, I don't know, 25? 25? Huh. Well, that's the oldest someone ever given me. Do you really, would you really like to know? 
because I'm a uh, I'm a lot older than I look. Uh, yeah. Yeshua laughs. laughs. He jumps. Oh wait, can I jump and just land behind her? I need an acrobatics roll for that. Uh, I'll be landing on your ass. God, I I hope I land on my face just for comedy. How do you delete the uh, item slot that you pull? I don't. Button? Holy shit. Okay, so you stick the landing perfectly. Well, not perfectly, but if if you were to get rated on your jump and flip behind Drava, you would have gotten a 9 out of 10. Awesome. And uh, what were you asking, Chris? I can't get rid of item slots that I have on my character sheet. Oh, Repurpose uh, them. That's what I do. Don't don't worry about that. It's no big deal. Anyways, after that, you know, backflip and just land a nine out of ten. I'm forty five. Drava blanks out for a second. You're how old and you can move like that? Well, then again, I shouldn't be. Hmm. <clears throat> Time does work differently in other dimensions. Uh, well, yeah. Wow. Let me explain this. The average human lifespan, where I come from, is between 300 to 500 years. Most people don't live that long, mainly because accidents or just a bad lifestyle. Usually military personnel live that long mainly because they have a healthier lifestyle and their special training of survivability. Compared and to they that, need us for the military, so they don't want us dying. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Well, then where you come from, you're pretty young then. And well, where I come from, you're about uh I'm quite most people would consider uh, the beginning of middle age and here in Palamecia you're pretty much a baby that's interesting to know wait how long do humans live where you're from um, here <laughs> oh, if they're lucky enough they can live to be a, a, about a 102, sometimes uh, 112. Huh. That's interesting. You know, you know, there was a time where we had shorter lifespans like that, but that was thousands of years ago. Right. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, your humanity will make it that far. I hope. Hopefully. Anyway, we've spent enough time here. Let's let's keep moving, shall we? Let's. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, you won't get to stepping again, and you <clears throat> exit. <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus. You won't excuse. exit this alleyway. Move into the next one. Oh boy, people. Oh, joy. And it looks like they, they don't look like a friendly bunch. Oh wait, you wanna come from down here where I'm pinging. I put Jay was talking in the wrong spot. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Okay, so. You two come out to this alleyway, and for time's sake, it is about about 10.58 at night. It's getting darker outside, temperature's dropping a little bit, and as you all are making your way through, you happen upon a few unsavory looking individuals, and one of them speaks 
at you all and says well 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 who do we have here looks like we got some newcomers to the city guys and is that everyone's faithful servant henry friends of yours <laughs> oh, I'll take that as the name. I don't know. No. I would say we're friends, given that, you know, he stole our positions from us. Ain't that right, guys? Congratulations on your promotion, Henry. Now all he does, he's just, he's just Frankie's faithful little servant. Wow. I bet he's enjoying the high-rise life. I'm guessing the one with the white hair is saying all this. Ah, oh, no, it's this guy, right here. Okay. Oh, the grunt. I don't like him. Fire time. Oh, shit. <laughs> you just... Are, are Full you on actually fire. doing that? Yes. <laughs> You're just gonna cast fire? All right. Yes. In that... All right, in that case... In that case, I'll just shoot the guy beside him. Uh, <laughs> we don't we, we don't deal with this bull crap. We ran some strike. We attacked before being attacked. <laughs> Especially when he badmouths me. <laughs> oh, I need you to actually cast those spells then. Fire. As I uh play this. Okay. I shoot this guy in the kneecap. Well, by taking the first attack, you catch this one by surprise, and the the heat from the fire knocks him into the wall, and he bounces. <coughs> his back hits the wall, and he bounces off it and lands on his face. Meanwhile, this guy is on one knee and holding it and is in very clear pain. And, uh, Drava looks to you two, and the only thing that comes out of her mouth as she pulls out her staff is, uh, well, didn't think you were, you two were that trigger happy against actual people, but it looked like they were gonna fight us anyway, so might as well take care of a problem early, am I right? More honor based. <laughs> as, as once Drava finishes her her sentence, she goes on ahead and she casts Blizzard on the white haired one over yonder. And uh this orc looking guy is so exponentially unsure of what to do with that he attempts to flee the situation. Can I stop him from fleeing? Mm. I don't want reinforcements. You can, but I need you to roll your weakest attack. My weakest attack? Yes. Can I also try to? <laughs> can I also try with slow? What's my weakest attack? Uh, uh, yeah, actually. The so slow is 2D. Oh, right. I need to put that in as an actual like a ability attack for you. Yeah, I was trying to put it in, but I kind of figured it out. I got you. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, I'll shoot him in the lower abdomen. Uh... Holy uh, God. Rick! What abdomen? What did you do? <laughs> you told me my weakest attack! I, I... Okay, you right. You right. I did. I did. Uh, let me just... I'm gonna cast slow on him. He's, he's gross. What happened? Did I blow up his body? What, what the fuck happened? Uh, well, you put a big-ass fucking hole in him. That's what you did. Uh, hang on. Um, I still haven't cast my spell, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing something real quick. The Fucking... guy's not gonna even move. <laughs> Fucking Yashua doesn't even hesitate. 
he doesn't even look at the man running away. He just shoots Poor at the guy. fucker. Poor. These crits today. God <laughs> damn. I'm trying to figure out why uh, it's not doing what it needed to do. Uh, can you click slow for me on your attacks and spellcasting? Okay, it works. Uh, that's what was coming. Uh, okay, so this poor bastard right here. Uh, wh where were you shooting him? I was shooting him at the lower abdomen, so he just like falls over. Okay. Like at the side of the lower abdomen, but. I guess I blew off his torso. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me think. Let me think. He blew off his leg. He could still crawl away. No, 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 no. You. Hmm. I'm make this real easy for myself. He's dead. Ah. Uh, so Yashua killed just, him. Yashua doesn't even look at him. He just, you know. Draws his gun and points the gun at his fucking right. Doesn't even look at the target, he just shoots and just kills him. <laughs> all right. This is all out war at this point. Just to send a message, can I roll intimidation? Yeah, actually. And we both? <laughs> well, let me, since... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna since... let Rick roll this one since he got the crit. Wait, is this what again, bro? All right. So fucking Yasuo just just sighs and says, "Don't fuck with a guardian." So that runs for like a little bit. <laughs> you look at the other three that aren't currently fucking dead, and you say what you said to them. And they all drop their weapons and immediately surrender. Okay, we need information where this F place is, though. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, hold Aren on. Aren't you supposed to know since you work for her? Not where that fire was. No. The politician? No. We, we oh, need okay. details. So, you... Okay, so Draver's gonna go talk to this one over here. You two pick which knife wielder you're gonna talk to. Well, I'm taking the guy who I burnt his eyebrows off. Alright. <laughs> I'll talk to this one here. Okay, so. I need you to roll. Please roll Persuasion. Both of us? Yes. I will look at those rolls in a moment. I feel bad for my guy. <laughs> okay, so. Drava manages to <clears throat> ring out of the person that she is talking to that F is short for Francesca. And this, she explains that the image is one of her many nightclubs that she runs around here. And that uh, elections are coming up again. And for the first time in a long time, uh, she has some competition for the seat that she has been holding for the last 20 years. Yashua gets out a slightly more detailed information that Francesca is one of three political heads that basically control their own sectors of the city itself and whoever this new guy is coming in trying to take people's seats and whatnot uh, he has a lot of supporters but there's also a lot of real shady 
stuff surrounding him is not many people really know the guy. As for Henry, uh, the guy you were talking to absolutely refuses to talk. Burn him again. Hey, burn him with fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, no. Because if you do oh. that, you'll kill him. So That's inst- fine. That's fine. <laughs> instead, um, for roleplay sake, you just hit him upside the head with your staff. And then he starts talking. But what he tells you isn't as detailed. Isn't as useful as what Mel and Yashua found uh, Drava and Yashua found out, but it's it's enough to work off of. Can I knock him out and take all his belongings? No. Aww. Uh you also for that fight, um, you all gain one hundred EXP. There's something I want to say to this guy, and I'm going to ask him to relay a message. Okay. 100 EXP, okay. It's how much to level up? 5,000. Yasha makes direct eye contact with this guy. He doesn't even blink. If I catch you fucking around in these streets again, there won't be no second chance. Do you understand? He nods very quickly. Get out of here. Can I dump my guy in the garbage bin? <laughs> um, a nice blue bin over there, over here. That would require him to be unconscious. Oh, that's a very easy task. <laughs> They're already almost dead. <laughs> Hmm. Let me think. Anyways. Help me uh, with this guy, Rick. <laughs> uh, roll... Roll strength. Strength? Okay. Three. <laughs> okay. Um... Wow. Uh, you hit him with the blunt end of your staff, and he... He staggers in place. <laughs> Yashua is just questioning you right now. <laughs> what are you doing to the guy? He insulted Francesca and my honor, okay? Mm. Can I knock him out? Uh, roll strength. Don't knock his head out! <laughs> oh, uh, wrong one. Don't do it! Okay, so. Oh my Yashi, god. will you look at him? You give him one nice, clean right to the gut, and he is KO'd. Oh my god. I thought I thought that strength roll, the strength save, I thought I just blew a hole in his chest again. Man, you in these 20s, bro. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I this... punch him in the gut. Yeah, and he's... I put him over my shoulder, and I just drop him in the recycling bin. All right. (laughs) We're literally cleaning these streets. (laughs) The one that Drava is talking to, she proceeded to further explain that she initially didn't want to be caught up in whatever this was, and she mentions... That the gang violence outside of the entertainment district of the city is getting to be worse and worse. And if she wasn't in such a dire need for 
money and medicinal supplies, uh, she wouldn't be doing this right now. She would be at home with her family, but she is going through uh, some pretty shitty times at the moment. Can I, ins can I like, see if she's lying or not? Uh, she is not lying, because if she okay. was, I would have... I would have uh, told you how to roll a uh, charisma save, and I would have done a deception roll for the NPC. Okay, in that case. Oh. Is this M NPC going to be useful later on? I will neither confirm or deny. Well, okay. anyway, we we're out planning her to name? give her some gill. Yeah. Wait, say that again? You two talk at the same time. I was planning to give her some gill because she actually gave us useful information. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Do, do you guys have any herbs? Um. The... Prior to me joining. Oh, you mean is that for the for the party? Yeah. Oh, yeah party was. Like... The party is like crazy stocked out on like healing items and. Herbs and, and all that materials equipment yeah okay yeah w yeah we could give her some herbs and some gill Yashua proceeds to like give her what uh, let's say five thousand gill sure oh wow she said she only needed a thousand actually give her now, now thinking of now thinking about it, giving her too much gill may, will make her a target. Let's give her two thousand. All right. There. Reduced my gill. I gave her two thousand gill and some healing herbs. And Yashua just makes direct eye contact with her too and says, "Stay out of trouble." Okay. Hopefully her family is somebody important that could help us. Uh, Drava, she she hands the elf girl uh, the same amount of gill you did, Yashua. So she gives up the uh, 2k gill. And she also gives the girl a a bag of a bag that contains a mixture of healing herbs and spices and she drew puts a hand on the young girl's shoulder and she very sternly tells her to piss off but to also stay safe and stay out of trouble and as the girl leaves she says that her name is jet Jets. Okay. Jets. So, Bonds will put with Jet there. J E T? J H E T. Oh, I gotta work on my Bonds and other stuff after this. Only Bond I have is with you and Drea. That's it. And this Jet girl now. I have a list of bonds I wrote down several weeks ago, but I don't know if those bonds are going to be cut because people don't want to show up. Ugh. Talk about that outside of the recording. So, moving on. Jet makes her way and she takes off and you all get to step in once again. And you find yourselves out of the alley and into a city crossroad. Dumps body there. <laughs> oh, look at this place. Yep. Time-wise, it is about about 11:20 night. Uh, most of the lights in the area are coming from the billboards and the flashing lights of what you assume to be 
uh, other nightclubs in the area. There are the stoplights are red and pink. There is a kind of fluorescent glow along the streets and sidewalks as well. Uh, the buildings they don't they don't look very inviting to you all, but you take a peek here and there, you can see quite a quite a fair amount of people on the inside having a good time. Hmm. Can I do uh, a roll to find out which place is a store? Uh, I will tell you now that there are no stores in this area. Thank you. Henry, do you even know your way around the city? No. As you can tell, <laughs> I'm very welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua just shrugs. Well, yeah, you were always directionally challenged. Yeah. The short-term memory loss. <laughs> I forgot you had that. Well, uh... According to this... Poster... And the address... We are currently... On... Uh... She looks at the poster, she looks at the street sign. We are currently on 72,803 North Road. We need to get to 76,092 Sidewinder Street. So I'm assuming that we should probably make east of here. And if that's not the right way, we'll just turn around and go the opposite way. Does that I sound good? I have an idea. May I? I could just enter this building, talk to these lovely people, and see if they're willing to ask directions. If not, we'll do it your way. I want to roll for him to be kicked out immediately. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, which building are you stepping inside? The one beside us right here. Oh... Uh... Hmm. Because he said that there was like people in the buildings and looks like they were having a good time. Okay. Right, right. Hmm. Alright. I need you to roll Charisma. Oh shit. Alright. I always fail with charismas. Okay. Not bad. So. You step inside the place, and the first person you see that isn't already in <clears throat> in the company of someone else, you ask them how to get to Sidewinder Street, <clears throat> and they tell you that when you leave here, you're going to want to cross the street immediately in front of you, and then you're going to cross the street over to the other side, and then continue north. This way. Cool. I head back out, showing my signs of gratitude to the individual. Alright. So, you relay that information to your teammates. I relay the information to Drava, since Henry is over there doing something. Okay. And after receiving said information, Drava, she approaches a crosswalk, takes a look to her left, takes a look to her right, sees no cars, and she crosses the street. And we get hit by a bus. Never. <laughs> you already got fucking isekai once. Isekai inside of Isekai. God, that would be horrible. Jesus Christ. God, Twilight yeah. Zone. Before we leave the area, can I do any kind of roll to see what's down both sides of the street? Oh, uh, that would... <clears throat> that... I don't want to miss a storefront or something. Well, that Riku would... did say there are no stores. Yeah. On In this area. But down the street, 
east and west. Hmm. That would be a perception roll then. Okay, let's see. I don't want to miss out on stuff. Funny. Okay, so to the east, you see, or rather, you can just barely make out like eight different restaurants in the same area, and all of them appear to be uh, different genres of food and sort. Mm -hmm. And to the west, you can see quite a few different music stores and you can also see a little uh what appears to be a knickknack hobby shop we're going to the knickknack hobby shop we need to get rid of these computer parts and microchips <laughs> um but the nightclub though we can go there after but where what? we what they might have more spell. <laughs> you know, at this point, Yasha knows Henry so long that he doesn't bother arguing with him anymore. Drea, can we go? <laughs> um, why don't we make contact with Francesca before we go shopping anywhere? Okay. Because that news report did say. That between the hours of, what, 9 at night and 3 in the morning, things would be a bit more dangerous than normal. And we already got into one fight, and Yashua happened to put a giant bullet in somebody. Unintentional. And, um, yeah, I'd rather not do that again. At least not now. I'm not in a fighting mood. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, Henry, I don't, I don't want to destroy another city. Come on, let's go. So, Drava checks the street. Friendly coming cars again. No cars. Crosses the street, and she has to make her way north. Now, let me to changes the maps again oh we're in the red light district Woo! is it just me or each or each block we go to is more high tech and more high tech <laughs> <laughs> we come from here uh, no we're coming from the bottom aren't we <clears throat> well, yeah right are... here hold on hold on you all continue north until you get to a point in the road where you have to make a left. And thus you all are coming from where I put Dravis token. Oh, that's a street. Okay. So, you all well, then. come to <clears throat> this Arab city. And looking up, you can see a giant neon sign that reads, Welcome to the Entertainment District. You can see many many different walks of life you can see people who appear to be very friendly you can see some unsavory individuals you see many different restaurants you hear like seven different kinds of music coming from many 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 different restaurants you can see a movie theater you can see a few other business looking establishments some places look more professional than others and looking straight ahead and slightly to the left you can see a giant f uh right in front of a building it is a, a hologrammed f but upon looking uh this button right here upon looking uh -huh. at the giant f and looking right up under it you see the address that you've been making your way towards since you got here well then Looks like we found our destination. Can't be that easy. <laughs> Though I have to say, each 
each area we've been coming across, the technology has been getting more advanced, more advanced, and more advanced. I wonder if some areas have more budget than each other ones. Ah, uh, well, doesn't really matter to me. I'm just glad we found the place. Agreed. Though, it does make me curious about the political standpoint in this whole city now. Yeah, mm. we'll find out when we talk to Freya. Francesca. Anyway, I'm gonna go on and go inside. Right behind you. Well, I head in first. So, let's see, turn this off, turn that off, all right, cool. So, you all get inside, and you can see quite a few people, uh, uh, rough, roughly, uh, about a, a little, a little under 500 or so people on the inside. Dancing, drinking, eating, having a good time. And the first thing that hits you when you get inside is the music. All my boys in here! Uh, where do we spawn in from? Okay. Right here. Alright, cool. Riku, remind me. What was your D and D character name here? Zero. Zero. Z I'll type it out. It's it's pronounced oh, zero, it. but it, it does sound like zero. Zero. Yeah. Oh, zero. Okay. Yeah. Zero. Fuck. All right. So, you all open the doors, and the first person that you see immediately stops you and he asks you who are you how'd you get here show me some id and when he looks at the rest of you, he says oh henry what's going on guy are they with you they are all right go on and have yourselves a good time wasn't this the guy that with that was one of the three brothers mm-hmm Guys, you'll let's learn go more past. about him later. Alright. Alright, so once Yasha you get, just nods at him. Once you get to the cent of the full entrance of the area, you can see a lot of people just jamming out and enjoying themselves. And you look at the medallion and not not medallion, the seal that Angela gave you, and it begins vibrating and just as you begin to question why it's suddenly vibrating you are approached by this lady right here and she's asking so you guys the people Angela sent over here yes we are oh hey Henry Took you long enough to get back. Did you get lost again or something? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the way back. Like sure, usual. Just face bombs. <sighs> oh, man. Why am I not surprised? Anyway. Frankie! They're finally here. She shouts behind her in this really tall elf woman turns around and she greets you. Oh. Hey. You must be the, uh, the newcomers to the world that Angie told me about. And I see you've gotten acquainted with Henry here. Uh, Pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Joshua. And she, and she speaks in she is, uh, she's taller than ice. She is approximately oh. eight feet and a half tall. 
Holy shit. Well, like Gash you, just looks up. You have to, uh, like, crane your neck up to look at her. And... Uh, as she notices you doing that, she... She says, oh, I'm sorry, where are my manners? She kneels down to eye contact level with you and Drava. Oh my god. And she extends her hand and she says, my name is Francesca Calypso. I am the owner of this and very many other nightclubs. And I also control the entertainment district. I'm sure you've heard something along the news about political figures and uh, how stressful that can be, but yes, I am one of the three. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Yashua shakes her hand and says likewise and introduces himself. And Dreva is slightly taken aback at how tall this woman is, but she shakes her hand and reciprocates the introduction. And this, this is my lovely assistant Cynthia. She's uh, been with me quite a while and she's, she's done more for me than what she gives herself credit for, but that's a conversation for another day. And, well, you've already met my very faithful assistant Henry. He handles a large majority of the legwork when I am incapable of doing so because I have to attend meetings and like papers and pass laws and <sighs> being a politician is an incredibly stressful job and uh, I remember when when he first got here he we met in a very unique sort of way uh, I was at home and enjoying a nice meal with myself and Cynthia and there was a very large and unnerving thud outside of our door and we opened the door and he was just lying there unconscious and bleeding. We, Sounds uh, like Henry. We fixed him up, asked him who he was and how he got here, and he told us what he was doing before he woke up in an entirely unknown location. And from there, he's been, as I said, helping me out, taking care of the things I can't take care of. And he is one of three uh, self-appointed guards I have for the entertainment district. As directionally challenged as he is, he does a very good job of maintaining peace in his own personal way. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. They've experienced it. <laughs> yeah, I can smell the fire coming off of you. I was the one that taught you that, remember? Anywho... Um... She was holding his laughter. We can... chat... in... my... VIP room in a few moments. I want to continue dancing and... working off today's stress. It was a very long day. Also... Uh, that seal that Angie gave you, I will take that off your hands, as you... Well, you aren't gonna need it for the rest of the night now, anyway. Ah, before that... Can you tell me what this is? I, I show her the other medallion. Oh. Um. Well, uh... This... This presents a problem. A problem that we can discuss later. For now, uh, keep that on you, but don't let anyone else see it. Okay. 
<sighs> he puts it back in his back pocket. Okay. So, she looks over to Cynthia, <clears throat> and they they have a silent conversation. But before you can question what's going on, Cynthia sprints over to the to the drinks behind the counter, and she very so eloquently flips back over it with a plate of food and an assortment of drinks in her hand as she guides you over to your table. Mm. Alright, I will come chat with you all and she looks at a watch. Uh, I'll say I'll say an hour. I think I'll have sweated out all of my stress from today by then. And with that being said, she flips back over to the center of the dance floor. Uh, can I go have a conversation with her? Uh. Privately. How Saying that I'm going to join you guys on the rest of the, your adventure. Yeah, alright. And see if she'll give me anything on the way out. So, After all, she's taught me all my spells and everything. Uh, that... Okay, so... Again, I don't know if Rick told you this, but a lot of the things that I have planned for the campaign are already set to happen at certain intervals. So, that whole conversation with uh, Francesca, uh, I already had that planned out. Okay. But um, you can't you can mention it to her, but for story's sake, that she's gonna uh, ignore it. That lengthy conversation will not happen at this time. Can I just say it to her as an idea? That's it for now? Yeah. Okay. So you wanna... Were you, were you intending to act, <clears throat> to act like that ask out her. for a brief second? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Imagine you trying to tap her shoulder, but she's too fucking tall. <laughs> and then I'll just join back with you guys. <laughs> uh, so you, you tap, no, you, you grab her wrist, you tap her wrist, you mention the idea to her. She gives you a nod and she, she waves you off, but she did acknowledge what you said. So, I'm gonna move, move him here, and as, as Cynthia puts you all's drinks and food on the table, Zero notices Yashua and he says, hey man, what, what brings you here? Cynthia oh. is also back dancing with uh, Cynthia and everybody else. Oh, Zero. Long time no see, huh? Yeah. Do you mind if we share a table? I mean, given that the sassy cat lady already put your stuff here, eh, there's really no point in asking. Go ahead and take a load off. Is he sitting cool. on the table at the moment? <laughs> no. It's just how Look. his uh, icon is it's, looking. Uh... There. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Like mines, Rick. Like mines. Ah, uh, like mines. I hate you. <laughs> For the queen. All right. Right. I remember you mentioning that you had a business here in the city. Yeah, I uh, work with Frankie over there. As he he's he's reaching towards some of the food that's for y'all, and he looks to you and is like. 
And he's saying with lines, is it okay if I take some? Yeah, sure, it just, you know, nods in a... It's just, he just nods, go ahead. Alright, so... He reaches over, and he takes a couple of fries from the food. And he says, yeah, I, uh... I work... I work with, work with Frankie, though I work for Cynthia. Uh, any new weapons or attack I decide to come up with, I run it by Frankie first, since, you know, she runs the place. And then, I wait to get the green light from the cat girl, and then I get to working. It's, uh, all, all things truth be told. It's a pretty sweet gig, especially with the knowledge and such that I have, where I come from. Uh, some days it's a pain in the ass, because uh, I'll get a request for something that doesn't exist. <laughs> or uh, someone have their head too far up their own ass, and try to, tell, try to tell me how to do my damn job. But, all that aside... What are you doing here? And, uh, how you been since we last talked? Well, it's been a bumpy ride, but so far, I'm doing alright. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm doing great. Though I was kind of surprised the different variety of tech I've come across. Like, earlier we were in the back alleys and everything looked so primitive, but... After traveling for a couple of blocks, I've noticed that everything became more and more sophisticated. Yeah, the uh, the back alley, and pardon my French, ma'am. Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? And uh, he's taught. He says that to Drava, and she very quickly turns her head, and he's wait, aren't aren't you the? The guitarist with that one chick, and you wrote that really depressing ass song. You played it for people. Yeah, sure. I tries not to laugh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's me. Oh, eh, whatever. So, continuing on. <laughs> yeah, that part of the city. That's what a lot of people call. Uh, What's it saying again? Um, the slums. No, 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 that's not what they call it. Uh, the ghetto. <laughs> was it that? I remember someone calling it the shits, but whatever. Um, I think that works too. Yeah, that's where the... That's where the people who don't have much go... And it's, as you said, the most primitive part of the, of the entire city in general because it's the most underdeveloped. Because well, no one, save for Frankie, gives a damn about the place and is actively trying to fight for it. Hmm. But every time she just has to come up with a new plan, someone somehow already has a method of counteracting that plan. And it's been a been a long uphill battle but one of these days she's gonna make some traction and that place is gonna change for the better well, I for... hope things pan out that way yeah it's uh well I'm sure she's told you being a politician sucks it really does especially when you have the hardest kindest for as for all the other parts of the city, well, once you once you leave the shits, it does get better. Though, uh, the side that you came from, you actually wait. When you all got here. Did you come into contact with the uh, identification robot? Yeah, that hook of junk looking thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other... <clears throat> the other entrances to the city 
they don't have those. Given mm. that, given the the reputation that the entertainment district has, uh, one of my coworkers decided to put a security checker over there, just in case some unsavory bastard wants to come in and start some crap. We've had people like that before, and we got tired of anybody rolling up in here on willy nilly, so we put a stop to that. Interesting. Yeah, but... Hmm. I guess with Henry being with you all, that's how you got in so easily. Yeah, he was our... He was our ticket in. Right, makes sense. And honestly, to be fair, uh, the only other way you could have gotten in was by mentioning that you were an associate of Frankie's. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in here right now. No, I mean, I would have, but would it take me longer? Much, much longer. Right, right. So, uh, did you hear anything on the news? On your way here. Well, well, I, I'm not really good at reading the language here, but Henry uh, caught me up to speed about the turf wars and and the political wars that's going on between the three. Yeah, there's this uh, this new guy. Came to the city a few years ago. Uh, I don't remember what his name is. But, uh, yeah, he's been trying to change shit. And, while on paper, some of the things he wants to introduce are cool and all, but his methods of going about it they don't they don't sit right with me or rather anyone in the entertainment district for that matter but I think if I'm not mistaken he may or may not have a hand in some of the backwater shit that's been going on here and that aside, uh, not many people know a great deal of information about him, which makes him even more sketchy than me. So, a politician that likes to pull the strings from the shadows. Anyway, oh, another thing too, did, uh, before you all got here, did, uh, did Angie mention anything about tech going missing? Tech going missing? Yeah, I, I overheard Frankie talking to Angie, uh, a few weeks ago. And she mentioned something about a lot of technology going missing. A lot of technology that shouldn't be going missing, but it is. Did you say anything about that to y'all? No. But we found these computer parts. Uh, anyways. Uh, last time I talked to Aunt, uh, Angela, she did mention about, uh, not only sophisticated technology going missing and not just that kind of technology, but also uh, people going missing as well. Shh. Keep that on the hush. It's... 
That's a conversation we can have later, but not here. Not here. Anywho, so, uh, you mentioned you found some computer stuff, Henry? Computer parts and a microchip. Hmm. Well, I know you like this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this microchip looks pretty fucked. Uh, I can probably do something with it, but for now, I can give you like 700 gil for it. Oh, that's fine. Nice. Uh, Zero takes the microchip from you and he hands you 700 gil. As for the parts, hmm. Hmm, I think. I think I can do something with these. I'm. I'm going to need more of them though. So, if you find more parts, bring them to me. <laughs> also, hmm. How many exactly does he need? Let's do it like this. Nineteen. Okay, so if you find another nineteen sets of computer parts and bring them to zero, something will happen. I'm not gonna say what it is, but something will happen. He creates a portal and we can go home. Ha! Imagine. Yep. <sighs> so. Anyways. I was meaning to ask you. You mentioned uh, a while back since we last talked that you had some experimental weapons that you needed testing. I do, yes. Yeah, sure, I just give them a smile. Well, I'm ready when you are. Well... Let's... Let's talk weaponry in the morning. And by morning, I mean, like... 9 or 10 or something. Because it's kinda late. I can tell you all the traveling for a while. You just wanna take a load off. So let's talk weapons and all that shit later. Sounds good to me. I do have some stuff for y'all that, again, we'll get later, not now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, anything, yeah. Any other questions you got on your minds? One last thing. Earlier, we came across a couple of punks. Does that always happen? They try to. Regular. Oh. That's a regular here. Usually I have to deal with them. Or zero. Oh, well. In that case, I, pr I probably shouldn't have blown a hole in the other guy then. Oh, well. Oh, okay. God. I don't know. Hmm. I show him the witch's crystal. What is this about? What the hell is that? Well, when we were first meeting up with them all, we got ambushed by a witch. Oh, that's right. It it it, it could be possible that uh, that our rendezvous ah, rendezvous was was leaked. God, I can't think. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't want to bother Frenchie with this. She has a lot to think about. Zero it also sounds like you have a lot of enemies, Henry. Off the table, and he reaches in his back pocket and he takes out a case. He opens the case in a small monocle is inside of it he puts it on his right eye and he 
begins to thoroughly examine this crystal. Hmm. Well, from what I can see, this is... This definitely belongs to a witch, but... There's something real different about this. It's... It's not your average witch's crystal, I'll tell you that. Uh, looks, looks a little tainted. I can, though, I can refine this down into something usable for you all, but it's going to take me a while. Can you do that? Yeah. We'll so, leave it in your hands, then. Yeah, take your time. Me get a little creative, since... I don't often come into contact with very many magical objects, so thanks. No problem. Do we all just hand him our crystals in? Yeah. Yep. That's down. What about the Xenomorph scale, Rick? Do you want to do anything with that? I'm going to hold Maybe. on to that, since it's very corrosive. You don't want him to make a corrosive gun for you? you already I already have one. a poison gun. Uh, you already do, huh? Hmm. Okay. But it doesn't hurt to ask. Yashua just like, you know, pulls out a scale and like and like he's just holding it like it's a card with his two fingers. Can you can you do anything with this scale? Hmm. Hmm. Let me... Let me think on that. Uh, do you mind handing it over, though? Yeah, here. Take that out of the inventory. Greatly appreciated. And the fur I don't think he could use at all. Unless you can make a cloak out of it. A corrosive co cloak. <laughs> the I... ghastly fur? No, I'm talking about the ghastly fur that we got last session. Uh, Actually, have that... someone in mind to give that to. That I can't do anything with. I don't work with Furs. material like that. But if you give it to the cat, she can do something with it. And oh, okay. You hear... Cynthia scream from the dance floor I have a name you blonde haired bastard the cat and I love shouts, how he calls him the cat and he shouts back and I'm gonna keep calling you cat cat unless you wanna do something about it and she she looks like she's about to storm over but Frankie pulls her back to the dance floor and just says you two chill out you, I've already heard you bicker back and forth enough for one day. Give me a break. Okay, so I'll walk over to her. Well, she she's she's dancing right now. I want to dance with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> roll charisma. <laughs> no, that's that's a that's a performance roll. Well, you got to perform to dance. Come on, give me a low roll. I want to be shitty at dancing. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, he's a good dancer. Alright, so you enter into the dance floor, and you get to dancing with the ladies and everybody else there. And as you make your way over, uh, you're greeted by a lot of people. Hell, hey, Henry, how's it going? And things along those lines. Of course that would be good. I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs> Yashra just like looks and thinks and just says the last time I've seen Henry he stuck there dancing and now look at him. I call Yashua over to join us. Yashua just puts his hand up, I'll pass. No, enjoy it. You gotta you gotta get that dance to us. <laughs> I had I had enough momentum for one day. What? Hmm. 
I'll dance Freya, with Freya. Come join too. us. Uh, I am. I am looking for a specific song. Give me, give me a moment. But you call over to Drava, and she initially looks like she wants nothing to do with uh, with dancing. However, upon taking a moment to, uh, to think about it. She eventually says, you know what, uh, why not, we made it here, we got done what we need to do today, and uh, yeah, sure. why not. I was not, <laughs> Yasha was like, uh, I will, damn, I was expecting to get shut down. That was like his excuse not to dance. <laughs> that means you're joining us, buddy, come on. There goes my get out of jail card. I can't. I know I didn't delete it. From the... What is it going for? While he's doing that, come join us and do your your performance roll. <laughs> they watch me roll like some shitty roll. I you slip and get, break like, my a neck. Two. <laughs> Let me look at my performance stat right now. Oh, jeez. What? No. Yes. You gotta break out the chicken dance. <laughs> the chicken dance. Jesus. Not that. If I roll a 20, I'm gonna start break dancing. You're gonna become clouded. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm gonna do the fucking... Andrea Rodeo dance. Yes. Oh my okay. god. If I roll a 20. Okay, come on. If not, you're doing the chicken dance okay, with found, the low I, row. I found what I was looking for. So. Get on the dance floor. You're not on the dance floor. No, hold on. He's looking for the no, no, soundtrack. I, I found what I was looking for. So, the three of you decided to join everybody else in the dance floor. And Frankie looks to the DJ and she does a nod and a wink and suddenly the music completely changes. Wait oh, no. Did I delete it again? Fuck, hang on. Yep. Uh, switch this playlist with this playlist. And then and there it is all right so the song in the club that is currently playing stops and when the dj takes note of the supposed signal that frankie did her and cynthia take two different sides of the dance floor and frankie Shouts at the top of her lungs. It's time to relax, sweat, and have a dance fight. What? And DJ takes note of this. So, oh no, I know this song. So it's a challenge for this event. Oh no! Yes. You all, the three of you, are going to be rolling performance against each other. Nice. Whoever hits 175 first wins. Okay. So who's going first? Drea? E... Actually, since, since you initiated this event, you go first. Okay, performance roll. Eight. Right, <laughs> Twist the ankle. We're starting out with the eight. Mm-hmm. I'll roll for Drava. Nice hit. Nice Drava's going to win this. Gang. Yashua crosses his arms. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Come on. You're a part of the group. 
I want to dance. I danced enough already. You got no choice, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're part of this event with us. I'm gonna shoot you, Henry. <laughs> Uh, performance, right? Yep. Ooh. Ah, he's so good, Andrea! <laughs> Alright. Starting okay, out, busting a again. move. I see you. Seven. Eleven. Twenty-three, wow. Oh. Okay, Mr. Okay. I don't want to dance. Coming out swinging. A two! <laughs> <laughs> I initiate this and I'm doing the worst. Yeah! Pull the muscle on your back. Ow! <laughs> I've never been good at it. Wow, this guy. Bro, this man stay getting high rolls, yo. Yeah! I break my leg! Good God! Okay, so uh, you you attempt to do something you ain't got no business doing. You screw up and you fall on your face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Frankie and Cynthia are having their own little dance battle with each other, but they're actively commenting on how well. Uh, Yashua and Dreva are busting a move. Oh, that one, I was not. Oh no. Oh no, Chris. Remember the common trend that we always get into? Whenever you get bad rolls, I get good rolls and vice versa. The land that 20, buddy. Oh no. Well, it's Dreva's turn. Alright, uh, I was messing with someone. 24. Ooh, damn. Uh, 28. That was almost a 20. 24. You got a 28. So, for description's sake, two of you... Two of you hit the splits at the exact same time. Yashua thinks to himself, this is going to hurt tomorrow. <laughs> he's, not used, he's not used to doing the splits. He's flexible enough to do them, but he's not used to doing that. Uh, Alright. Alright, Chris, roll. Oh, another one. Oh. <laughs> so you, you pick yourself back up off the ground, but uh, you keep at it. Right. Draver roll. Twenty-two. Right. Seventeen. Okay, so currently, as it stands, uh, Yashuan is at one hundred and seven. Draver is at ninety-three. Henry is at twenty-seven. <laughs> failures you you attempt to do a front flip but you screw up the landing and land on your shoulder somehow damn you gotta lose some hp for that <laughs> i already had 10 loss nah, i'll take another nah, 10 nah he did he didn't land that hard I'm not, I'm not gonna take any HP from him. Joshua just looked at Henry and was like, What are you doing, bro? 
<laughs> like panicked, I'm all like, are you alright? I've only initiated this for you guys. Enjoy yourselves from a long time traveling. Oh, are you saying that in character? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, in response, after Drava uh, finishes the twirl that she's doing, she says, uh, Well, I... Thanks! I mean, we, we... We weren't traveling that long, but it's a thought that counts. Anyway, you should probably get up now. Oh, funny. <laughs> and as, as, she Damn, says, girl. as she says, you should probably get up. Uh, she <laughs> she leaps she into the air, and you know that that uh, that axle spinning thing that ice skaters do. Oh no, she does that. Yeah, she does that, but she like glides in a circle from where she was standing and lands back from where she started. Rick, Damn. do your final move. <laughs> Three. All right. <laughs> so what dance moves am I doing now? Uh, you you start to do a backflip, but you instead uh, instead of landing on your feet, you land on your hands, and you flip up from that handstand back onto your feet. Henry's turn again. If he rolls another again? one. Yeah. If he rolls another one, I'm gonna lose it. Like, I'm leaving the session. 13. Oh. <laughs> I'm leaving the session. <laughs> oh lord. Fourteen. Twenty. Okay. Did anybody hit it yet, or no? Uh, no. Yashua is real close to it, though. <clears throat> oh, that's a nice roll. Alright, it's better than, better than him busting his ass. It's better than a one! I'm just synchronized with Drava. <laughs> Alright. You have hit the score mark needed to win the event. Cool. <clears throat> so, uh... After... After all this time... Mind you, y'all been dancing for about... Mm, let's say... Let's say about 40 straight minutes non-stop. Right? And... After this... Uh... Francesca, she wipes the sweat off her off of her forehead, and she declares that she has had a wonderful night. She is now quite tuckered out from dancing. She's gonna go and take a break, and then go home. As everyone else in the nightclub says, "Bye, Frankie," and various other forms of seer around and stuff as Cynthia hands her a towel and she beckons for you all to follow her into her VIP chambers and with that the session will come to an end for the day like and subscribe or else I'm gonna holo shot you too <laughs> Alright, I'm hitting the stop recording button now.